Hi folks, so in this video what we're going to do is we're going to complete a question here based on the uh, topic of geologic geometry, otherwise known as roads. And this question here specifically is from the 2022 uh, Leave Insert DCG higher level paper, okay? And here is the question itself. So with this question, what they're going to do, it's in the back of the, or sorry, it's in the section C, which is the applied graphics section. They're one of the kind of questions you can kind of pre-prepare for and you know exactly is coming up each year. And as I said, it's geologic geometry, but lots of teachers call it roads. So it's always going to be C1 on the paper. So they're going to give you a bit of information and you have to apply that information to the sheet, which is located on the back of section A. So I'm just going to zoom in on that there now. It says here the accompanying map located on the back page of section A shows ground contours at five meter vertical intervals. So we're going to highlight a little bit of information here and there. So five meter vertical intervals well what does that mean that means the distance between our contours 45 50 55 is five meters okay um just take note as well our scale is one is to a thousand so five is going to be kind of a number we're going to apply because that is the difference in the contour height now it says here a b c d is the center line of a proposed uh of a proposed path the path is widened between a and b to form a rest area as shown so you can see here we've got A, B, C, D, which is the proposed path. And it says between A and B, you can see it's widened out here. And that's going to be like a rest area where people can obviously pull in. Um, and then it says uh, the path and the rest area have the following specifications. So here's the information that they're giving us in relation to each one. The portion from A to B is level at an altitude of 65 meters and is widened as shown. So A to B is level at an altitude of 55 or 65 meters. The portion from B to C is level at an altitude of 65 meters. So the exact same, so that's quite helpful there. And then it says the portion from C to D is rising uniformly from a height of 65 at C to 70 at D, okay? Okay, so um, that's kind of the information. So straight away with that information, I would actually go and I would write that on the sheet. Okay, so first things first, I know A is at 65 meters. So I'm going to write 65 meters there. B is also at 65 meters. C is at 65 meters. And then D is at 70 meters. So in the sections here, I'm going to write in a couple of little notes then as well. So I'm going to write here level at 65 in between c and d i'm going to write in another note level at 65 and then here i'm going to write in rising from c to d just like that so it's rising from C to D. So at C, it's lower than the road. Okay, sorry, it's lower part, and D is the higher part. So it's rising on the road. Okay, there are little bits of information. I've taken them. The reason I write them down is I take them from the sheet. I don't have to come back. I can come back to it, but I can actually take them from the sheet and write them in here. Okay, now it says here, and this is the next bit of information, using side slopes of one in one for our cuts. Okay, so when I do my cuts in a while, I'm going to put them in with green and i'll use the red then for the um for the embankments so one and one for cuts okay so that's our ratio for our cuts and then we're going to do a one in five for our embankments now another word for embankments that is fills okay so i'm just going to write that in there put it in the red since i'm sticking with the red so cuts and fills and obviously for cuts Pretty obvious there, that's cuts. Okay, so our ratio for our cuts is going to be one is to one. So basically anywhere that the land is higher than the road, we're going to cut it away. And then for fills, anywhere that the land is lower than the road, we're going to fill it up. Complete the artworks necessary to accommodate the path and rest area on the northern side. Note the artworks on the southern side have already been completed. Okay, and we'll get on to B and C. So we're going to do the earthworks first, okay, on the northern side of the road, which is this top side here, uh, because the southern side has already been completed. And you can see they've kind of given us the profile there of how it looks. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take note of any positions on the road where um, I'm going to have to either cut or fill, okay, and I'm going to highlight those sections. So as I said previously, for all my cuts, I'm going to use green, and for all my fills, I'm going to use red. So I've kind of got... 
uh, for all my cuts I'm just going to go with the green okay so what I want to do is I want to identify parts of the road if I'm cutting that's where it's going to be higher if I just focus on this section from A to C first that is where it's going to be basically higher um, than the road so if we look at the contours and I try and pot, plot I suppose the 65 points first so from the C 65 is the height of the road and I want to find anywhere 65 contour pass through so there's a point that is a point right there where the road is at the same height as the contour passing through it. Is there any other 65s? Yes, there is. There's another one here. Okay. And as far as I'm aware, I think there's one up here as well, but there's kind of a difference there now. We'll see how we get on with that. Okay, so there's two points. Now, what I want to do is identify which is which. So for my cuts, I'm going to use the green. So I'm going to identify what areas I'm going to do a cut in. So this is, look, you can see 65 here. The next contour is 70. 75 then we've got the 80 down to 75 uh, then we have the 70 and 65 so inside in this area here from this contour to this contour okay now on the day of an exam you're probably not going to use like a highlighter like this okay but inside in that area there that there is where i'm going to do some cutting so i'm just going to write just a little note for myself I'm going to cut inside there okay now in the next area okay so we're at the 65 here now it goes 60 55 50 and you can see it there and then we've got 45 40 40 40 and that all that area there going back up to the 65 so all of this area here okay I'm using the red highlighter and that is going to denote my fill section that is essentially where the land is all lower than the height of the road or the pathway here or even the rest area and all of that there i'm just highlighting all this okay and all of that section there is going to become a fill section for me so i'm just going to write in fill write in fill down here okay so that's the area of the road i'm going to focus on first i'll get onto this bit here in a second from c to z but that's where there's an incline in the road and we have to do something slightly different there okay now i've identified that little bit of rough work beforehand now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to my back of my sheet here i'm just going to use it as a little bit of rough work and what i'm going to do is i'm going to write in cuts and fills actually switch out the pen there use this one so what i always do is i make a table okay and cut and fill now the other word for fill is embankment okay now our cut ratio if you refer back to the sheet was one is to one so that means that for every one meter i go up in height i'm also going to come out one meter from the road so i'm going to do a little triangle there for every one meter i go up in height i'm going to come out one meter and then our fill ratio of one is to 1.5 that means for every one meter i drop down from the side of the road i'm going to go out 1.5 meters so that's going to be our fill ratio so slightly different now what we have to do is we have to take the difference in the contour height which is 45 to 50 if you remember at the very very start it is going at five meter intervals i'm going to take that number of five and i'm going to multiply it into the ratios okay to find out how much i will measure out for cutting and fills so if i multiply that into the ratio five times one is five and five times one is five now this is the one that we're going to apply for cuts okay they're both five in this case but we always do the one where we measure out from the road because we're working in a plan view here we cannot tell height difference or depth down okay now i'm going to apply this five then into my fill ratio as well so five times one is five and five times 1.5 is 7.5 so for all my fills i'm going to measure out 7.5 and for all my cuts I'm going to measure out five okay so there are the two little bits of information that i needed all right so starting over here and we're going to work on the fill section first okay so as you can see here we've kind of got a straight part of the road and then obviously where the pathway has been enlarged obviously for a little rest area here now i'm going to focus on this little section here first so all i'm going to do is i'm going to do up a vertical line from this point right here okay and you can see the little vertical line and on that line what i'm going to do is i'm going to measure up in increments of five or sorry 7.5 which is our fill ratio 
the one that we just worked out. So 7.5. Going to do another one, which will bring me to 15. Another 7.5 will be 22.5. And then 30. And I'll do one more, maybe. Usually 4 or 5 will usually do it. 35, 30. 6, 37, 37.5. Okay, so it's roughly there. Okay, I know it's hard to get the exact 7.5, but you just go between the 7 and the 8. Okay, now, as we do fills, essentially what's going to happen is every 5, or sorry, 7.5 I've measured out from the road, it's going to drop 5 meters in a vertical height. And if the road is level at 65, well then the road here is at 65. Okay, as I move up 7.5, okay, that's just the increment that I've measured. Okay, but technically at that one there, I'm at a contour height of 60. Okay, obviously the next one then would be 55, 50, then obviously we'd have 45 and 40. 65, 60, 55, 50, 45, 40. And the reason I went to the 40 is because that's as far as it goes. Okay, now that's going to be when the road is going this way and it's going obviously just horizontal. Now we also have to do it here where it is coming out at an angle. Okay, so what I need to do is I need a line there that I can measure perpendicular from that edge. So just a little bit of slide set squares here. I'm just going to rotate my set square. And I'll do it from, it doesn't really matter, I'm going to do a line right from here. Okay, and you can see the line I've done there. And on that line then I'm going to measure out once again in 7.5s. Just make sure you're accurate. So, 7.5, 15, 32.5, 30, and 37.5. Okay, there's all my increments. Okay, and once again, I'm going to mark those out. The side of the land is 65, 60, 55, 50. 45 and 40 okay uh, all right so there is all our um, fill ones now all we're going to do is we're going to plot those points so I'm going to start with the easy part so the 65 one has already been done now I'm going to find the 60 contour which is here to 55 50 and so on so the 60 contour I'm just going to mark that as best I can so it'll be from the next one out so that will be right there. Now you can do lines the whole way across, but I'm going to try and keep it neat and tidy. So there's the 60. The next one up will be the 55. Then we would have the 50. Then I'd have 45. You can see, I can see the contours there. 45 and 40. Okay, and there will be another 40 there. Now, that there, you can see what I'm going to do here. You can see where I plotted my points. All I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch in ever so lightly through those, like that. Okay, I'm going to heavy this in a minute with a marker. But all you would do is you would do this very lightly, and that one will go there to the 40. And then obviously we're working back down, obviously it's going 45 again, so I'll get another point over here. Don't think there's any need to put it in, but I could technically get another 45 over here. And I could draw that all the way over there. Okay, so that is when the road is just going perfectly horizontal. Okay, but we also have the, the pathway, or sorry, the rest area, which is going off at this angle. So all we're going to do now is we're going to find another kind of curve that is going to be going parallel with that. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to use the side here, which is already at 65. I kind of have a point there, technically, I suppose. As you can see, the 65 contour here, and it's hitting it there. So there's probably a point right there. That's where it's going to start. And parallel with the side of the path, I'm going to do the 60 one. So look, there's the 60. So there's the 60. It's where I pass through the contour of the 60. Is there any other 60 contour? Yes, you can see down here. If I follow it down, it's going to be one right there. So if I do it here, I'll also do it there. Just to have it done. Probably don't need it. There's the 55. If I follow it down, there's the 55. Slide it out. You can see I'm using the height line here. There's the 50. There's the 50. And then the other 50. There's probably a 50 here. Yeah. 45. Right there. There's the 45. And there's another 45. And then finally the 40. So there's the 40. 
and 40. Okay, so there we have it. Now that I've got that, what I'm going to do is once again sketch in that little curve. So to do that, all I'm going to do, now I don't think I need to start down here, I probably need to start about here, but I will put it in from this point maybe. So from there it'll go like this, up to this one. Through that point there. Through here. And work my way back, just locate the points wherever they are. Okay, and there you have it. And what you can see is based on the straight part of the road when the curve went like this, and then obviously the rest area part when it went like this, you'll see excuse me, you'll see a point where the two of them intersect. And that is going to be the point where it kind of joins here to the side, like that. Okay, where the rest area and the road kind of meet. And all I'm going to do then is I'm going to come along, just move my marker. I'm going to go through all those points and just mark them. And now that I have them, put in the ones that I'm actually going to be using. Okay, so I'm going to go from there, through there, onto that one. And then I'm going to heavy in this one all the way up. Okay, and there we go. That is that part of the road done. We've done the fill portion of the road, okay? And now what we have to do is we have to move on to the cut portion. So, fill part done. And I put in my little tab holes at the very, very end just to explain all that. We'll get onto that in a minute. But now I'm going to move on to the cut portion. So if you remember from the cut portion, based on my ratio, I'm going to be measuring out in 5 millimeter increments this time. Okay, so I can use the same line, but for the sake of it, I will, I'm just thinking, yeah, I can use, I'm actually just going to set up a different line here. So another vertical line, and on that vertical line, I'm going to measure out in five millimeter increments. Okay, so nice and easy this time. Five, 10, 15, 20. Just put in a couple. Now, I'm going to look at my contours, and it goes from 65 up as far as 80. So 80 is the tightest I need to go. Now, when we're doing cuts, what you have to understand is, as we measure out from the road, once again, we've done it in 5 millimeter increments this time, but the number is going to rise. When we do fills, the number lowers. So it went 65, 60 for fills, whereas here it's going to go 65, 70. So it's actually going to increase 70, 75, and 80. Okay, that's actually all we need to go as far as. So now that I've done that, I'm going to plot those points in. So the 65, I'm going to mark up as far as the 70. You can see it there. And it's simply going to be that one there. And I think it's this one here. Yep. Yeah. There's the 70. 75. I'm going to mark it up so you can see here I'll follow it up. Yep. Yeah. So there's the 75. And just make sure. So it's this one. And then the next one in. That one and that one. Okay, and that's the 80 ones. And there we have it. Cuts was nice and easy in this case. So there's my points. Let's plot them in. And as always, I would sketch it in lightly first. Now, obviously, on the day of a test, you'll be using a light pencil and then going over it with a darker pencil. You won't be using any markers, kind of like I'm using here. Once again, just for demonstration purposes. Okay, there we have it. Uh, we have now done the fill portion of our road and the cut portion of our road. That is the first section of the profile completed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the road section from C to D. And we know that the road from C to D is rising from 65 to 70. Okay, so if I come back to my worksheet here, what we need to do now, and I'm just going to do a little, I suppose, a poor enough sketch here now, but it'll explain the next section. So when we have roads rising, or what I should say is roads with an incline, 
there's a couple of different rules then that we need to apply. So let's say I'm going to put in a road here. So there's our road. Okay, it's a little section of the road there, obviously, or pathway, whatever you want to call it. And the lower part of our road in this case, which is C, is down here. That is position C there. The high part of the road, which in this case is D, is up here. Now we know that D is at a height of 70 and C is at a height of 65. And what we have to do is we have to determine, well, first of all, are we going to cut or fill depending on the land around it? So I'll actually just check that. I didn't even think of that. Sorry. So if C is at 65, uh, D is at 70, I'm going to look here. So it goes 65, 60, 55, 50. 45 all the way back up 65 okay so in that case the land around it even though this is 65 and 70 the land all the way around that is all actually going to be lower so in this case we're actually just doing um a fill so i'm actually going to put this section once again nice and quick there doesn't always work out this way usually you might have to do um two uh, a cut cone and a fill cone i'll explain that in a second so that section there is actually going to be a fill as well so now that it's filled, I'm just going to write that in. Okay, so that's going to be a fill as well. So now that we've actually done that, okay, we've determined that it's a fill, so we're going to be using this ratio at a 7.5. But what I have to determine then is, when I'm doing a fill, I have to put account for the rise in the road, okay? And when there's a rise in the road, what we're going to do is we're going to be basically putting in a fill cone, okay? So what I'm going to do is, and I'll actually put it in in red here, the difference in height between the two of them, first of all, 70 minus 65, okay, that's 5, okay, so that's going to be applied in a while now up to these ratios here again. But at the very side of it, when we're doing a fill cone, it's like we're going to draw in a little cone going in there like that, okay, and that cone there is going to account for the rise of the road, okay. And the, and the measurement for the cone, we get it from applying this 5 and applying it to the ratio. So we're going to account for that. And that fill cone that's going to be in there, obviously in the plan view, we would see that as an arc or a circle. We're going to then connect a tangent from that all the way to C. And the tangent then will be going at an angle and it's going to be at a height of 65. Okay, so that's what we have to do. We have to create a cone that's going to basically account for that height or rise in the road. And that cone then will help us create kind of like this plane here. Okay, and that's basically where we're going to get our embankment or our fill material. So, what do I do? Took that away a second, sorry. I'm going to take the difference in height from D to C, which was 5 meters in height, and I'm going to apply that to my fill ratio, which in this case was 1 is to 1.5. Okay, and I want to work out what's going to be my fill cone. So, all I'm going to write down here is fill cone. So when I multiply the 5 into the 1, it's the 1.5. What does that become? 5 into that, well, 5 times 5, 1 is 5. 5 times 1.5 is 7.5 again. So in this case, it just worked out. So my fill cone is going to have a radius okay, of 7.5. And that's the measurement that we're going to do. So from position D then, all we're going to do here is, from position D, put it in red. Do a line up like this. Okay, you can see that little line there. And on that line then, I'm going to measure 7.5 millimeters up. So from the tree up to 7.5, mark that there. So that there from the side of the road, I always measure from the side of the road, not D, the side of the road. I'm going to mark up as far as the 7.5. This is a little bit awkward. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw in that fill cone as best I can. Okay, and you can see there, it's quite hard to see, but you can see the little fill cone, because when I look down the top of the cone, in the plan view, we're always going to see a circle, or in this case, a semicircle or an arc. And what I need to do now is I need to create a tangent line connected to that. So all I'm going to do is, from C here, that line that I've just after putting in there is the tangent line, okay? And that tangent line is essentially this line here. Okay, and we know that line there, as I just mentioned previously, is at a height of 65 because that's where it comes from. 
Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to measure out perpendicular from that and then measure out in increments of 7.5 for our fills. So, get the pencil here again. I'm going to go perpendicular to this line here. I'm just going to do it from that point there. Okay, so I've done that line there. Once again, I'm just going to measure up in increments of 7.5. So just do about 4. So 22.5. Just working backwards. 15. 7.5. There we go. And if you remember correctly, when we're doing fills, the number is going to drop as it moves away from the road. So if this one is at 65, well then this one's going to be 60. 55. 50. 45, and I'm just going to check, does it go down to the 40? No, 45 is as far as we have to go. Now, everything, kind of like there, over here previously, it's going to move parallel, okay, where we did here previously. Now, these ones over on this side are going to move parallel to my tangent line. So, first of all, actually, sorry, I should plot my 65 one. So, whereas I've got a point right here. Now, where else is there a 65? Actually, there's nowhere else that I can actually see one, so that's absolutely fine. So the next one I'm going to put in is the 60. So where do I see a 60? Well, I see a 60 right here, if I follow it up. Is there any other 60? Yeah, if I follow this up, can I see it? Yeah, it's just about there. It's hard to see, but it's just on the page. Next one is the 55. Is there any other 55? Yes, there is. Okay, next one is the 50. Just make sure it's quite easy to get these mixed up. And then finally, the 45. And there's the 45 there. And there. Okay, so there we have it. Now that I've got my points, I'm just going to mark them in a little bit easier. And that is going to be our path when we account for the rise in the road. So really quickly now, and we're nearly done. Okay, so there we have it. Right, and there you have it folks, that there is the artworks completed on the northern side of the road, okay, and we've done the part A of the question, which is a lot of the work in this stuff, okay, the part A has been done. Now, the last thing I would always put in is some tadpoles, so anytime you have a fill section, essentially, that is where the land, or the, the path, or the road, or the path in this case, or the road, whatever it is, is higher than um, the land around it. So in that case, if you imagine if the path was higher, or yeah, the path in this case, imagine you put a ball there. Okay, it's called tadpoling, and the tadpole is going to go down the hill. Okay, so same thing here, it's going to go down. Now, in this section where we cut away, the land is higher than the road, so if there was a ball there or there, it's going to roll towards the road. And this is a fill, once again. Okay, and there we go. We have done it on either side there. All right, we've done our cuts and our fills. Now, you don't have to do it in the bottom. We just worked on the top. Okay, um, next part of the question. So, it says here, in the space provided at the top of the map, draw a vertical section profile on the line EF. So they give us a line here already, EF, that's a vertical section profile. Essentially, what is the kind of land going to look like if we slice through it? And it says specifically, so on the, uh, sorry, draw a vertical section profile on the line EF after, that's highlighted there, the artworks for the path and the rest area have been completed. Okay, so you can see our vertical section profile EF, but you can actually see here, it's kind of going into the path area here. Okay, so this is actually um, important, kind of probably from this section right here, that's going to actually change what it would have previously maybe looked like. Okay, so profiles, how do they work? They've kind of given us a contour height here, okay? And what we have to note is this line here, they've already given us this one here at the 60, and you can see it already passes through the 60 contour right there. So that's going to be our profile. Now a profile is essentially, what does the mountain look like if we took a slice through it uh, along the line EF? 
okay, or the land, I should say, not really a mountain, but the land. So, first of all, to work out uh, the measurements I'm going to measure up for my profile, all I'm going to do is take the difference of height between the contours. The gap between the contours is 5. I'm going to measure up in increments of 5 because my scale is 1 is to 1,000. So, from there at the side, I'm just going to start off by doing a vertical line like that. Okay, and on that vertical line, I'm going to measure up in 5 millimeter increments. So, 5... 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. I'm not sure if I need that many, but i put them in. So that's the ones going above the line. And I also may have ones going below the line as well. Because we go down, I think, as far as a 40 here. So if that's the 60, I'm going to measure down in 5 millimeter increments as well. Okay, so there's a 60. That'd be the 55. Probably did too many actually going above it. Let's put them in anyway, regardless. Okay, so I want to mark those heights out here. So if that's the 60, 55, 50, 45, and 40, I'd have a 65 here, 70, and 75 and 80 is what I'm going up to. Okay, now let's find those points. So all that's going to happen is anywhere that the profile section E to F passes through a contour, I'm going to project it up. So this first one was here was at 60. The next one here, you can follow it up, is at 65. So right there, I'll go up as far as the 65 line. And I've got the 70. And I've got the 75. Just take your time with this. Then we've got the 80. And does it come back around to 80? Yes, it does. Okay, then we're, I assume we're going to be down to 75 again. Yep. Yeah. And I assume we're going down to 70. And then this one here is the 65. Yes. And then from the 65, we're down to the 60 is the next one. And then we're into the... Check in here, 55, and then we're on to the 50. Okay, and at this point right here, it's actually bang on it. That one there, I assume, is going to be the 45. Okay, so that's kind of it so far. We'll just focus on that section first. So that's kind of the profile. You can see where they're all passing through there. It's like I'm drawing the shape of the land, or whatever you want to call it, mountain. So, sketching that in. Now, I know it's a straight line there, but you have to imagine we're going upwards, so it's going to go up before it goes down, so there's probably a little curve there at the top. Now that's as much as I'm going to put in before we get on to the, how did I call it, I call it um, the rest area. Let's take our time with this, move around the pages you need to. Okay, so that's the section of the roadway from E to here, this point, and it still continues into F, and we're gonna to have to figure that out as well. But at this point here, obviously it has been kind of changed up because after the artworks have been completed. So from this point here, um, the actual land itself rises again because we're obviously sloping it up towards the road. So what we actually have to do is, it's probably more so where these contours, the ones that I have coming here off at the side, are going to pass through. So we have to put those in now, only it's going to be the horizontal ones. So, if I'm working backwards towards that, 
All I'm going to do is I actually will have to draw these in. I probably should have drawn them in earlier. Didn't anticipate that I'd need them. So the 65 one is already passing through it. So that's going to go from there. But it's only from F. So that's all I'm really concerned with. We'll get on to that. So here now, if you remember, I did the 61. I'm going to do a line like this. That is my 60. That's the 55. 50. And the 45 is hitting right there, so I was happy with that one. Now you can see the lines I'm after putting in there. They're the contour heights in relation to the rest area. Now, what I'm really concerned with is, because we're after changing that up, because my contour lines are there, look, the 45 one was already done. That's right here. Now, technically, the one for 50 is coming from here. That's the one, not this one. Okay, whatever that one, sorry, that was 40 and so on. Okay, that's the 50 one. Then this one here is going to be 55. Then I've got, obviously, 60. And then I've got... I suppose that would be the 65. Okay, and what is F at? F is at 65 as well, so that's absolutely fine. Right, so I'm going to plot those in now. So putting those in, this one, as I said, so this one was at 45, so it's actually going to rise again from here. So this one is going to go up to the 45. This one is going to go up to the 50. 55, I should say, sorry. This one's going to go up to the 60. And then finally, I assume this one here is going to go up to the 65. Now there's all our points. Not sure what they look like. Is it sketched or is it actually going to be a straight line? It's close enough to a straight line there. You can see those points I'm after finding. I'm going to check them. Now a lot of this could come down to accuracy. To me there, that actually looks like it probably should be a straight line. I will put it in that way. Now it looks like it should be a straight line. You can sketch it in, but it looks pretty much to me like it should be a straight line. And then at the very top, this is actually where our rest area is. So that actually is just going to be flat going across there. Okay, so that is the actual profile done. A little bit awkward. This bit, not too bad, but that there takes a little bit of understanding of how we did that here. So there's the next part of the question done. <laughs> so it says here, a mobile phone mast is to be built at point E. Okay, so you can see point E here. A mobile phone mast is to be built at point E. Determine and indicate in meters, so they're going to ask us for the height, I'd say here, the maximum height for the mast if the top of the mast is not to be visible from the ground at point F on the rest area. So let's locate point F, right? Basically what they're saying is F is over here, E is over here. What height uh, can will the mass be so that I can't see it over the top of the mountain. So let's locate point F first of all. So F needs to come up to the top of the rest area. So right there, that is position F. Okay, now what we have to do is, if there's a mass to be built at E here, they're basically saying, what height can it not be? I don't want it to be higher than the mountain that I can see it. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to do a tangent like that, going over the crest of the mountain, or the hill, I should say, like that. You can see that line I'm after drawing in there. Okay, now that line I'm after drawing in there will determine the point of where the mass can only go up as far as that I wouldn't be able to see it. So I'll draw that in now in black. So at that point there, that there is the tallest height that a mast height can be, uh, sorry, that I could actually build where it would not be seen by F. Because anything above that, I will see it. So I'm going to write in mast height. And all I'm going to do now is just measure it. Okay. And once I get that, for me there, it's saying... Uh, I said 28, uh, 27 is too small, it's about 27.5, so I'll round up to 28. Now I'd imagine on the day of an exam it could be 27, that's maybe they, may, they might have it, but all you do is you put it in, and as long as you're within one or two millimetres, I'd imagine you get the mark. So 28 metres in height, mast height, 28 metres. 
Um, so you have folks that there was the third part of the question. We've now determined the max height. So they're just posing a real world scenario to you there. Um, nice little question there based on the higher level topic. Um, this stuff was very achievable, obviously a little bit of a challenge here on the, um, the rest area. We had the sloping surface over here. We had a profile section up here. And then we obviously had to determine a bit a height of a mast as well. Okay, nice little question there from the 2022 exam. Uh, hope you found it helpful. Helpful folks, that's the question done. Okay.